Hi fellow traders. Before I get to my recap on my trade today, I want to quickly go over um, my nightly watch list. Now I can potentially have two watch lists to start the day out with. I'll do a scan at night. I'm looking for uh, stocks to meet a specific criteria. You know, and I'll have a watch list I make in the morning where I'm looking at the gappers, the, the ones that gapped up or gapped down, you know, over 4% that, you know, meet my criteria there. But on the, the nightly watch list, what I'm looking for are stocks that have made a 52-week high with a gap up that day or a 52-week low with a gap down that day. I'm also looking for abnormal volume. Um, I really want to see at least it trade twice the volume or twice the average day volume. But I, re I really want to see four or five or six times. I mean, the more they can double it, um, the better the trade is going to be, I believe. So I'm, I'm looking for those two things. There are other criteria that the ticker has to meet. But, you know, in a nutshell, just kind of give you an idea of what I'm looking for. You know, that's what I'm looking for. And you can see CPHD was on my, my watch list yesterday because on Wednesday it made a 52-week low. And you see it made all of this move, if you remember from yesterday, it made all of this with pretty much no volume. But for, you know, a trader like me, I, I can't really get in it and trade something that doesn't have volume. But it had a lot of potential yesterday. Um, it made a, a new low yesterday, so that's why it hit my scan last night. So I kept it on watch. And But when it opened the day, I didn't really see any range. And, if, you know, the, the stock does have an average true range, uh, which is 269. And this is figured over the last 10 days. But when I look at the daily range or the potential range that a ticker has, I'm looking at the upper and the lower deviation band from the VWAP, and that's what this is. Um, I made them the same color, but it's the upper and lower band. And usually once it sets within the first hour or so of trading, it's going to trade within that range until you start getting volume to come in that will drive the stock, you know, above it or below it and start these bands to, you know, creep up. You know, I wasn't interested in this because of how tight it was. But you can see, I mean, it really had no volume all day today. And even though I traded 3.7 million shares, it traded 2 million shares in the last 15 minutes. So, you know, there was just no no chance for me to trade that today. And, it, you know, it didn't make a new low, so it won't be on my watch list anyway. Um... FPRX was another one. Um, yesterday it made a uh, 52 week high, and so it, it um, ended up on my my watch. Um, the other thing, this did get a lot of attention yesterday because of the moves it made. So I was expecting a little bit more out of it, but when it opened, you can see how tight this range was. There's just no room to make money in there. But when the volume came in, you know, a little bit of volume came in, but it was enough to push it up off the VWAP. And had I been, if I was more of a swing trading or had more of a swing trading mentality, you know, I could have put 100 or 200 shares on this and got five points, you know, just by putting it and letting it run all day. Because I think it, you know, this was a good five point run up. Um, then if I did that, <clears throat> the spreads wouldn't really matter, you know, at all. So, I mean, that's probably something I need to look into the next strategy. Because I see too many of these that move that can give me potentially big moves with no stress. And, you know, the only thing I have to deal with is you know, the big spreads it has. But if I'm getting in it and I'm going to let it hold and let it run the rest of the day, the spread really doesn't matter. But <clears throat> that's something that's, 
that's down in the future. Okay, the other ticker I looked at was STX. So let's take a look at the daily on it. All right, when I looked at it last night, this is what it looked like. Um, I had to go back three years to find levels from the daily chart. And so when I came back over and I saw this, I'm like, look, this is, it pretty much bounced off this level and came back up, got bought back up and closed here. So my plan today was, on this ticker was it to fade um off bounce off of this and then take it long you know back up over yesterday's highs and that that was a the thought i had in my mind last night so this morning i mean i alerted those three in chat this morning but i realize now that if i don't put it in the alert window that this list gets buried in all of the the morning um, post and chat and it's kind of hard to get back to it to see it so if I put it on the alert side it'll be easier for you guys to find it so I'm, I'm gonna start doing that from now on but you can see uh, when it opened we got this one big sell-off here and it actually took this level out on the first candle and this candle went to fade you know open and started fading once it got to the low of this candle um, you know I went I went short and I was trading off of the two minute candle here so once it opened here and it broke the low I'm on this candle right here so I go ahead and take it short and come down and it kind of got hung up on this level and every time it gets to a level of support or potential support I'm going to be watch it real close because I don't want it to pop up and take my profits out and because the 9 you can see how far the 9 and the VWAP was you know above this so I want it to take profits you know if it starts to come back up because what I normally use is the 9 and the VWAP as, you know, if it closes above the 9 or closes above the VWAP, then, you know, I'm going to take the trade off. But it's just too far away, so I had to go back to using, I'm um, looking at the 2-minute candle, the first candle to make a new high, that's where I stop out. And that's exactly what I did on this. But I also like the fact that there was no room between here and here, so that should have been a nice scalp you know back up the VWAP so I could get another 30 40 cents going back to the VWAP dump it and then just wait to take the move off the VWAP on up so I did that and once I started looking I saw the 20 coming in and once I saw that I knew my any move after that was pretty much dead um, every trade I was in um, on the bad side the 20 stuffed me so I started respecting it more this week and you know that I did the right thing because here I could have easily gone long expecting to move back up here because it was over the 9 it was over the VWAP but the 20 was coming in and, and it kept me out so if you look <clears throat> back here there was nothing else I had on watch so you know this this chart stayed up pretty much all day and it almost baited me back in here toward the end of the day when it started running up you know it, it tested this support twice and this is the second time and it started coming up and you know it, it went past the VWAP and it claimed this um, level of resistance you know it became support and really could have taken it it really tried to bait me into it but you know I know better on Friday afternoon so I didn't take it I was just part of following your rules it was tough because I wanted another trade I was about I'm well over my weekly goal but I'm a little bit below 
my weekly average for the year. And I wanted that extra couple hundred dollars, you know, so that I could make my weekly average. But, you know, that stuff creeps into your mind. Sometimes you just have to be disciplined and, you know, start thinking and doing something else. So, you know, I was glad I, um, you know, listened to my mind and read my note cards and, you know, left it alone. But there was a lot of good opportunities today in chat, a lot of good opportunities this week, even though the market was soft. Um, you know, the volume was way down. It's really tough for new traders because when we're trading with low size, a small size, and even new traders who are, you know, may have larger accounts and just throwing money away, it's real difficult, you know, to trade in these conditions. Um, you really have to understand, you know, how to read the price action. And really have to have your rules and your discipline in place. Or you find yourself on the losing end trying to follow other traders. And not knowing what their their setups are and, and all of that. But, you know, every day in chat, I know Ross talked about it. Jeff talked about it when he did um, his um, recap the other day. And Mike talked about it. It's all about. You know, being careful, sticking to your rules and knowing when it's time to adapt, you know, being flexible and be able to adapt your strategies, you know, to a change in market. And that's all I've been doing. Um, that's all I've done. And, you know, I think, you know, once you do that, you can really start feeling good about um, being a trader and being able to trade in all these in, in different market conditions. But all in all, a good week. Um, hope everybody had a great week and everybody have a great and safe weekend. And I'll see everybody back in chat on Monday morning.